I just covered the exception handling in my modular minimal API setup. So now let's finish that up with validation exception handling. I have recently covered that validation exception handling, but only in the MVC context. So now I'll cover that in the minimal API context as well. So if you see my screen, you'll see that I try to apply the fluent validation the same way as before, but you can see this is an MVC extension. It doesn't do anything for the minimal API. So I'll quickly hover over it so you can see this. See class Fluent Validation MVC Extensions and the Fluent Validation MVC Configuration. I tested it out, that does nothing for our minimal API. So I'll undo that and guide you through the actual configuration. So in last video, we covered that endpoint filter, the API exception filter. Let's have a look. Which just implements I endpoint filter, which gives us this invoke async method with the invocation context and the delegate. So the idea would be to now be able to add a validation exception and return that as a nice validation result. But for that to work, we first need to make validation work. So I created something similar, an endpoint filter, API validation filter, and passing through the type to validate the create newsletter subscribers request. Let's have a look. I didn't finish it yet because I want to take you through the process. So we have this API validation filter implementing endpoint filter, giving us that invoke async method. Then we see a field of validators, which basically injects the validators for the type we pass through. So the create newsletter subscribers request validator is likely the one that's going to be stored in this validators field. If of course we registered that validator correctly in our dependency container. Okay, so now what I did next is I added that filter, but only to one endpoint. I would rather add that, like I did with the exception filter, to the entire group at least, or maybe to all of the routes at once. Let's first take a look at the validation behavior. So the behavior that will validate the on the mediator pipeline. This is taken out of the clean architecture of Jason Taylor. And I'm going to try to mimic that, but for our endpoint filter. So let's take the example of the create newsletter subscribers command. That would be the T request. So we're getting the validators for that type. And then we enter similar code. Let's debug that. So we're in the breakpoint and the first thing we'll inspect is this validator, which correctly gives us the command validator we're looking for. It has the rules in there and the type command. So that's good. And what, what happens then is for each Oh, sorry, here, for each validator applicable to this uh, T request, we'll let, uh, run the validate async, store those validation results, and then check if there were any errors. If there were any errors, we'll throw a validation exception. So that's then where our exception handling would kick in. Maybe it's important to inspect this request. So we see the request email test one two three four five what I just posted through the swagger and that should give me a validation error since yeah so I got one failure and valid email address. 
Email validator. Yep, 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 yep. That's good. So let's just run that. And then in the swagger, I just see 500 because we're not catching those validation. Well, we're not handling those validation exceptions yet. So heading over to the API validation filter, we can mostly reuse the code of the behavior. The first thing to do would be to register these validators since the features project is only registering the validators from that executing assembly. So to do that, I made another extension method, add newsletter subscribers API, which I then have to add to the program CS of the brand API. And then I add all validators from assembly containing this request validator, which is the shared project. I hoped for a more generic approach. If you know how to do that, please let me know. For now, I'm just going to continue like that. And another difference would be if we look at the validation behavior, we can access this request and pass that as the in the to the validation context. But in the API validation filter, we don't have that. But we can access those context arguments, which should contain the data we want to validate. So we can get the argument where the type is the request and then as casted to the request, then we need to add this constraint. And then the rest of the code is the same. So let's try that. Then the first thing we see is we actually get the correct validator. Then request would be, yeah, contains the subscriber request with the values. I also added a name property just to see if it would validate all of the properties. And then we get two failures. Name must not be empty and invalid email address, which is great. I hope there would be an, a more generic approach that I could just add it to the route group, uh, but that doesn't seem to be possible as of now, because that would mean that you would have to get the correct validator from the service provider. And I can't seem to pass a, yeah, the type of one of the arguments to the validator to then resolve that service that doesn't seem to be working. I tried, but and let's finish everything up by formatting that validation exception nicely to the consumer. So we go to the API exception filter we built in the last video and we add that fluent validation exception to then handle it by casting that income exception as validation exception. And then we strip away everything we don't want to see. So only the actual properties and the validation message. A final remark is this handle unknown exception will catch your unhandled exception and return a nicely formatted uh, result to the consumer. But that also means your exception, your stack trace is gone. You don't see what actually happened. So I would recommend to either log it in here simply by injecting your logger or uh, make that the responsibility of maybe the mediator, uh, a mediator pipeline behavior. I moved this validation behavior to the implementation project since that is very, very general class. 
that's not specific to the module and I created an unhandled exception behavior like I just mentioned which logs the exception that occurred and re-throws that exception and I then of course add this mediator configuration to the program CS I might move that to the brand.features project I still have to make but one interesting problem with that is let's say I throw an exception before the mediator activates that behavior will do nothing so it might be wise to both have the exception logged in the exception handler as in the unhandled exception behavior if you're confident enough that you are catching the most common exceptions and yet an unhandled exception occurs you could also decide to just let it happen because maybe it's a rather critical exception and you don't want to catch that so i cleaned that up moved it to the brand.features and made sure to call add brand features and then in the extensions of that to register everything that is needed and that is all for this video I hope you liked the video, learned a lot, I did for sure. If you did, please like, subscribe, because there is a lot of awesome stuff to come. And it will be more about building that brand's website from now on. Since the groundwork has been laid, maybe before deploying I'll have to do some more work on the API, but that's for later. You may buy me a coffee if you can and you want to. And I'll be publishing the code to my Patreon. See you in the next video.